David, could you tell me, first of all, about the clinical context of what you're doing here? What was it that you were taking on? What challenge? The challenge that these two studies are taking on is uh, a wicked problem that we've known for a long time, and that is of cachexia. That once people start to use muscle as their energy substrate uh, in advanced disease, it's a real problem. It limits the therapies we can give, and importantly, uh, it looks uh, at uh, prognosis for these people. And what have been the options up to now, and what is animal then? So the options to date have been uh, progestational agents like Megestrol, uh, steroids such as dexamethasone, but these have had limited uh, ability to actually change lean body mass. They may have increased uh, weight overall without uh, edema uh, being the only cause of that increase in weight, but what we're talking about here is the ability to sustainably increase lean body mass. Anamolin is the first ghrelin agonist that is available. Ghrelin, as you know, is released by the stomach in response to uh, food and has effects on both appetite and metabolism. Its metabolic effect is, is one of anabolism, so it lays down muscle and helps us in that area. So you conducted the Romana 1 and 2 studies. What did you find? So Romana 1 and Romana 2 studies are multi-site, international, randomised, placebo-controlled trials where participants were randomised in a two-to-one fashion to anamolin or placebo. Importantly, lean body mass was greater in both studies, uh, while the control group continued to lose lean body mass. Whole body weight was improved in both studies, while the control group continued to lose weight. And importantly, patient-associated factors from the functional assessment of anorexia and cachexia were far better in the anamorlin arms of both studies than in the placebo. It's a new agent though, what about toxicities? This is a new agent and it's incredibly well tolerated. As one would expect from ghrelin being an anabolic uh, substance, what we have are a number of people with hyperglycemia, uh, which was well controlled easily, and a very small number of people who became overtly diabetic. Again, managed as we would control any diabetes in this setting. What then could be the, the clinical implications? The clinical implications are really very exciting. There's every chance that this is the beginning of a generational change. After all, the loss of lean body mass, the use of muscle as the energy substrate, is the beginning of a final common pathway for so many cancers. If we can shift that, then we potentially can shift the therapies we give we are waiting to see the survival data for one year continuation studies and that will be available in the next few months. But this is exciting. This is a generational change. And the take home message briefly for cancer doctors, what would that be? The take home message is that we have a new agent, a novel agent, that is able to increase lean body mass in people with advanced cancer in a way that we haven't seen before. It opens up therapeutic options and uh, we're very excited by the, the opportunities that it may offer also in terms of prognosis, uh, but we're yet to see those data.